when they have it. And in some countries, the personal experiences of uh, this kind of behavior. And uh, when you see someone in Africa, don't generalize and say, all oh, generals are allergic to accountability. Not all of them. There are some who can submit themselves to the Constitution, who can operate below the law, not above the law. Furthermore, how does he feel qualified to comment or respond to a question on members of parliament not having an idea what their true role is in parliament, regardless of which country they are? Finally, should there not be a limit as to how many times a person may represent in parliament? What's your last point? Should there be a term limit for parliamentarians or it should be unlimited? Uh, well, for now, it should be... That's, a, that's an interesting debate you are coming up with because we've only been uh, limiting uh, the presidents only. Uh, when it comes to members of parliament, we have never had uh, such a, a debate. I must be honest with you. I was looking at, for instance, at uh, John Lewis, he's a congressman in uh, USA. He used to work with uh, Martin Luther King. And then I look at uh, Lady uh, uh, Pelosi. Those two, I, I met them in 1989 in Washington. They were still Congress people, uh, congressmen or Congress lady, whatever you want to call it. They are still in that uh, institution even today. So which means you, if you were to say, I want to limit the period for members of parliament, yeah, there might be some challenges in terms of, uh, cons of uh, institutional memory the experience, and so on. I mean, look at Pelosi today. She might end up being the person who has saved America from Trump's uh, dictatorial tendencies. <laughs> but it's, it's worth debating that. But here at home in South Africa, it's free for all. <laughs> it's only a president who has served two terms only. So I think that's uh, uh, general. We are in our last ten minutes of uh, this conversation, and uh, the questions. Uh, some people are saying it's a great discussion. One says it's nice discussion. You never know what nice means in Africa, <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, somebody is saying I'm enjoying what I'm hearing. Uh, you know, we have this civics literacy program, mm -hmm. which is promoted and powered by our radio platforms, just to learn civics, the rights and obligations of citizenship. Mm. I know you are locked down. It's very difficult to lock down a general, but I know you are an obedient general. So mm -hmm. I. You don't have a mask, but that's all of us then. But uh, <laughs> we are not going to spread COVID or this virus. But General, do you feel this need to promote literacy? Use your time whenever you say, I know you have been available for us at short call. You think this is important in building the Africa you want? Oh yes, there is. There's no doubt about that. Especially that uh, now we have uh, an agreement to trade amongst ourselves, and I, I predict that uh, after coronavirus saga, we the, there's going to be a lot of adjustment. He, some of the countries which used to be independent producing food and so on. They suffered when the so-called globalization was introduced. 